Welcome to McFly Angler. I've never been a guide, but I still enjoy teaching people how to catch more fish. So join me in this video where I show you how I tie this fly. So I like using a 3 to 4 X long streamer hook for this fly, like this Risen number 300. For whatever hook you're using, secure it into your vise. And if you choose to weight your fly, a good way to do this is with some lead wire. Here I'm using a .01 size lead wire. You could go with a heavier wire if you want more weight. But personally I like adding 20 to 30 wraps of this wire to help keep the fly down slightly, but not sink too quickly. And try your best to make sure the wire is on your hook evenly and smoothly. For thread I like this Vivas Power Thread 140 in white. Start your thread with a small gap behind the hook eye and bring your thread rearward. Keep the tag end on as it will help you smoothly go over the lead wraps. Once you've built a thread dam on either side of the lead, then you can trim off the waist and make a few tighter wraps back over the lead up and down to smooth out the lead bump. Then bring your thread back to about the bend of the hook. Now make a fairly long dubbing loop with your thread and attach the dubbing twister. I find it also helps to bring your thread up to the eye of the hook and get it out of the way. For dubbing, I like this Streamer Dubbing Fiber by Risen, and a bright colored flashy dubbing like this Ice Dub will work for the hot spot. Pull a large clump of Streamer Dubbing Fiber and pull it apart in your fingers a few times to align the fibers. Now this stuff is really long, so you will want to cut it in a few pieces. I find five equal pieces just about right. Separate the pieces like so, and here is why I like this dubbing. It will stay together easily, which makes it perfect for using in a dubbing loop. And you'll need two equally long pieces of that. Now prepare some ice dub in the same way, only this time just cut it in half. Carefully place the first piece of streamer dubbing in your loop, and try to arrange it evenly. Place the hot spot in as well, which can be tricky. Then place the second piece of streamer dubbing in your loop and try to make it even as well. Once everything is adjusted properly, then give your twister a spin and create a dubbing hackle. You really want to twist this up tight, so give it quite a few spins. It will help to pick out the dubbing slightly as well to keep it from becoming a large rope. Grab the hot spot and bring all the pieces together angling outward away from the hook. Pull it tight and bring the rest of the loop close to the other end, forming kind of a triangle. You might have to give this a bit of a twist first, but if you do it right, it will end up just spinning on top of itself and creating an awesome bushy tail. Lay the twister and loop on top of the hook and bring your thread back down to capture the loop with a few tight wraps and clip off the excess loop. At this point, I like to pick out the loop a bit and trim it as well to my desired length and shape. Now that we are done with the tail, we are just going to tie up the top part of the woolly bugger. And I like the method that uses wire, and for this size bugger, I like using a medium sized wire. And silver works great. Tie in your wire securely, and clip it to your vise to get it out of the way. On your desk should be some extra dubbing that got clipped out or fell out of the dubbing loop. Gather this up, and we'll use it as the body of the fly. I mean waste not, want not, right? Simply dub this onto your thread with a fairly thick noodle, then wrap it up just shy of the hook eye. You might need to add a little more dubbing depending on the length of your hook and how thick you dub this on. And also don't worry about getting this part perfect. It will be covered up mostly by the feather. And now we need a feather. A simple and inexpensive rooster saddle like this will work just fine. And I'm actually looking for Schloppen, which is located on the back side of the saddle. As you can see, these feathers have more webby and long fibers, which will work great for this size bugger. Also, you can see that this schloppen is about double the size of the hook gap, which is what I'm looking for. To prepare this feather for tie-in, strip off the bottom fibers, right after they start getting webby. Now you can see there's a curve to the feather when looking at it from the top part of the feather. Strip off some of the fibers to the right of the curve, leaving the stem uneven like so. With the curve of the feather angling rearward, and the side with less feather facing away from you, tie this feather in right behind the hook eye, straight up and down. And this is achieved with two wraps over the feather and then two wraps over it going the opposite way. Then I like to make two tight wraps in front of it to really lock it down tight. Then clip off the excess stem. Now start palmering the feather down the hook shank, making two tight wraps in front near the hook eye first. 
Once you reach the rear of the hook shank, grab your wire and start making wraps up the hook shank over the feather, going the opposite direction. It also helps to wiggle the wire while wrapping to help ensure that it doesn't trap the feather fibers. When you reach the front, pull all the fibers rearward and then make two very tight wraps over the wire. Then helicopter the wire off clean and make a few more tight wraps to really secure the wire and build a small clean head on the fly. Now you can whip finish your fly. At this point, I like to take a toothbrush and really give the fly a good brushing. It will help break up a bit of the webby feather and give the fly a nicer, bushier look. And don't forget to clip off that excess feather. Then, to finish it all off, I like to cement the head with this amazing UV curing resin made by Solarevs. It's called Ultra Thin and has a really nice applicator. It will cure really hard and give your fly a professional looking head, even if your whip finish isn't perfect. And as you can see, this tail moves very freely. That's some really good motion. When swimming in the water, the tail pulsates and almost as irresistible to bass. Well, I hope you enjoyed another fly tying tutorial by McFly Angler. I wanted to let you know that I've gotten you all a 15% discount at Risen Fly Rods. Go to their site, and link is in the description section of the video, and check out their stuff. They have fly tying materials and also fly rods at a fraction of the cost of other places. And they're just as good, if not better quality. Better yet, type in McFly at checkout and you'll get additional 15% off. Also guys, go check out my merchandise for sale. Hats, shirts, jackets, mugs, and more, all with my awesome logo. I will see you on the next video. Now you go catch some fish.